King Chima, a leader revered for his valor, and his daughter, Princess Ama, whose compassion touches every heart. However, beneath this peaceful realm, dark currents swirl as Lila, Ama's maid and friend, harbors a burning jealousy that slowly poisons her heart, setting the stage for a gripping journey through love and betrayal. Expect a journey through the depths of human emotions where every smile hides secrets and every gesture could be a thread in a web of deceit. As the tale unfolds, witness the transformative power of truth in a world where beauty and danger dance in equal measure. In the heart of Africa, nestled between rolling hills and lush forests, lay the village of Zumali. This was no ordinary village. It pulsated with life and vibrancy, its markets bursting with the colors of woven fabrics and the air rich with the scent of spices and fresh earth. At the center of Zumali's pride was the royal palace, a grand structure of ancient stone and bright thatch a testament to the village's storied past and its brave leader, King Chima. King Chima, a man as sturdy as the baobab tree, was revered not just for his wisdom, but for his legendary courage that once saved Zumali from marauding bandits. These tales of valor weren't just stories passed down through generations. They were etched into the very soul of the village, inspiring all who lived under his rule. On this sun-drenched day, the village square was particularly lively. It was the eve of the harvest festival, and everyone from young children to the elderly was involved in the preparations, their laughter and chatter creating a melody that danced on the wind. Amidst this joyous backdrop, Princess Ama, the only child of King Chima, moved gracefully among her people, her presence like a gentle breeze that soothed and invigorated. Princess Ama was the jewel of Zumali. Her beauty was not just in her striking features and elegant gait, but in her kind spirit and the genuine smile she offered to one and all. Since the queen's passing, Ama had taken to her royal duties with a heart full of love and service, often seen not atop a majestic throne, but among her people, helping in the market, or playing with the children by the mango groves. But this story is not just about a princess loved by all. It is also about a shadow that lingered close, unnoticed yet potent. Leela, the princess's maid and childhood friend, watched from the sidelines. To the untrained eye, she appeared devoted, always by Amma's side, assisting her with her royal duties. What many didn't see was the simmering jealousy that clouded her heart. Leela and Amma had grown up together, running barefoot through the palace gardens, their laughter echoing off the stone walls. But as they grew, so did the gap between them. Amma, born into royalty, and Leela, a villager's daughter, her proximity to the throne only a courtesy extended by royal decree. This arrangement allowed Leela to be near Amma, to continue their friendship under the guise of servitude, a fact that pricked at her pride each passing day. Today, as Amma stopped to speak with an elderly vendor, praising his ripe bananas, Leela held the basket, her smile fixed but her eyes hollow. She watched as the old man bowed deeply, his face creased with a smile as wide as the river that ran through Zumali. If only it were me they respected, Leela thought bitterly, her smile waning as she turned her gaze away from the warmth that surrounded Amma. This wasn't just a passing envy, but a deep-seated desire that had begun to take root in her heart, a desire to be seen as more than just a shadow to royalty. As the sun began its descent, casting long shadows over the vibrant village square, the seeds of discontent sowed deep within Leela, setting the stage for a tale of betrayal and heartache. For in the land of Zumali, where love and loyalty ran deep, so too did the whispers of jealousy and the dark allure of power. The sun dipped below the horizon, 
casting a soft golden glow over the royal gardens of Zumali. These gardens, a paradise of blooming flowers and towering trees, were the heart of many childhood adventures for Princess Ama and her maid, Leela. But as they walked through the fragrant aisles of jasmine and hibiscus, the weight of adulthood and the roles it imposed hung heavily in the air. Ama, dressed in a simple yet elegant robe of woven kente, paused by a fountain adorned with sculptures of the ancient water spirits worshipped by the village. The soothing sound of trickling water seemed to echo her thoughts. Leela, she began, her voice soft yet filled with concern. I have noticed you seem distant lately. Have I done something to upset you? Leela, carrying a basket of freshly picked flowers for the palace halls, forced a smile. No, my princess, it is nothing. Just the tiredness from the preparations. She lied, avoiding Ama's piercing gaze. Her heart raced, not from fatigue, but from the burden of her concealed envy and the dark plans brewing in her mind. Ama stepped closer, her expression gentle. Leela, you are more than my maid. You are my dearest friend. If there is anything you need, you must only ask. Her genuine concern shone through, highlighting the stark contrast between her selflessness and the shadows clouding Leela's intentions. Leela looked around the lush gardens, a reminder of the world she was allowed to partake in, but never truly belonged to. I am grateful, Ama. Your kindness is more than I deserve, she replied, her words edged with a bitterness she could barely conceal. As they resumed walking, Ama shared her apprehensions about the upcoming suitor selections. I do not wish to marry for power or prestige, Leela. I wish for a love that sees me for who I am, not for the crown I will one day wear. Her voice was wistful, her gaze lost in the distance. Leela's thoughts darkened with each word. Here was Ama, born to everything, beauty, power, love, while she, Leela, had to watch from the shadows, always the friend, never the beloved. The sting of injustice pricked at her, fueling her resolve to change her fate. Changing the subject, Leela pointed to a cluster of night-blooming flowers. Look, the moonflowers are about to bloom. They say these flowers bring truth to light. Her words carried a dual meaning, hinting at the revelations that the night might bring. Ama nodded, mesmerized by the opening blossoms. Yes, let us hope they bring clarity and truth to all of Zumali. She was oblivious to the fact that the truth Leela referred to might well unravel the fabric of their lives. As the evening grew darker, they returned to the palace, each lost in their own thoughts, a princess longing for genuine love, and a maid cloaked in betrayal, walking side by side yet worlds apart. The morning sun cast its first golden rays over Zumali, bathing the village in a warm, welcoming light. Today was no ordinary day. It marked the beginning of the week-long harvest festival, a time when Zumali's gates were flung open to welcome traders, performers, and suitors from far and wide. Among the newcomers was Kwame, a young hunter known across neighboring villages, not just for his prowess with the bow, but for his noble spirit. Kwame, tall and robust, with a demeanor that balanced strength and gentleness, entered Zumali with a mix of anticipation and curiosity. His deep brown eyes scanned the bustling market, taking in the vibrant tapestry of life that unfolded before him. His heart, however, searched for something beyond mere adventure perhaps a connection that would anchor his wandering spirit. As he navigated through the crowd, his gaze was drawn to a commotion at the far end of the market square. There, surrounded by a group of children, was Princess Ama, her laughter mingling with the high-pitched giggles of her young audience. She was narrating tales of Zumali's heroes, her animated expressions bringing the stories to vivid life. Kwame watched, mesmerized not only by her beauty, but more so by her humility and the genuine joy she derived from simple pleasures. Unlike the princesses of lore who sat in secluded towers, 
Ama was here in the thick of her people, her heart as open and inviting as the village itself. Compelled by a force he couldn't explain, Kwame approached the circle, his presence soon noticed by Amma. Their eyes met, and for a moment, the noise of the market faded into a hushed whisper. Welcome to Zumali, Amma said, her voice soft, yet carrying the strength of her lineage. I hope you find our village as heartwarming as its tales. Kwame bowed slightly, respect and admiration evident in his gesture. I am Kwame, a humble hunter. Your village is indeed as beautiful as its legends, and you, princess, bring life to these tales, he replied, his voice steady yet warm. The children, sensing the shift in their playmates' attention, slowly dispersed, leaving Ama and Kwame in a bubble of tentative curiosity about each other. I see you are a man of the wild, Kwame. What brings you to our harvest festival? Ama inquired, genuinely interested in his story. Kwame hesitated, then decided to speak his truth. I came for the festival, yes, but also in search of something deeper. They say the heart of Zumali is its people. I wish to see this heart for myself, he explained, his gaze never wavering from Amma's. Amma smiled, touched by his sincerity. Then you shall see it, Kwame, and perhaps share in its rhythm, she offered, gesturing towards the ongoing festivities. As they walked together, sharing thoughts on life and dreams, a bond began to form, subtle, yet undeniable. Unknown to them, from a distance, Leela watched their burgeoning friendship with a darkening heart. Her jealousy, once a simmering ember, was now a blazing fire, threatening to consume not just her, but everything in its path. As the harvest festival continued in full swing, the bonds between Amma and Kwame grew stronger, their easy laughter and shared moments becoming a common sight in the bustling Zumali. However, as the new friendship flourished, Leela's feelings of betrayal and abandonment deepened, driving her to a decision that would change the course of all their lives. One chilly evening, under the guise of gathering herbs for the palace, Leela slipped away from the festive lights of Zumali and headed towards the shadowy outskirts. Her destination was the neighboring village of Ikon, known among the locals not only for its skilled craftsmen, but also for its darker secrets. There, amidst the ancient trees and whispered legends, lived an old witch who was rumored to possess powers that could bend fate itself. Leela's journey was fraught with conflict. With each step, her mind raced with memories of her childhood with Amma, days filled with laughter and dreams shared under the same sun. Yet, those memories were now tainted, overshadowed by the sight of Amma with Kwame, a reminder of everything Leela believed she deserved but was denied because of her birthright. Reaching the edge of Econ, Leela found the witch's hut, a crooked structure cloaked in vines and mystery. The old witch, a gnarled figure with eyes as sharp as flint, greeted her with a knowing smile. I sensed a troubled soul would seek my help tonight, she cackled, her voice a blend of menace and mirth. Leela, undeterred by the eerie welcome, stepped forward. I need your power to change my fate, she declared, her voice steady despite the swirling fear and doubt. I want to be seen. I want to be loved. I want to be the one they admire, not her. The witch pondered Leela's request, her fingers tracing the lines of an ancient tome. Jealousy is a potent seed, and from it great and terrible things can grow, she murmured. But everything comes with a price, child. Are you willing to pay it? Determined, Leela nodded. Yes, whatever it takes. With a wicked grin, the witch prepared a dark potion, a concoction of shadows and whispers. This will bring you what you desire, but remember, the shadows you summon will also follow you, she warned as she handed over the vial. Leela accepted the potion, the weight of her choices heavy in her palm. That night, under the cover of darkness, she returned to Zumali, her heart hardened, her resolve clear. 
The path she had chosen was irrevocable, fueled by a festering jealousy that promised to engulf her and everyone she once loved. Back in Zumali, the harvest festival reached its zenith with the village square alive with vibrant colors, melodious tunes, and the joyful laughter of its people. Flags and banners fluttered in the gentle breeze and every corner of the village was adorned with flowers and ribbons. It was a scene of communal happiness and celebration, a stark contrast to the dark currents swirling unseen. Princess Ama and Kwame were at the heart of the festivities, participating in traditional dances and tasting the myriad delicacies prepared by the villagers. Ama, dressed in a vibrant outfit that mirrored the festival spirit, moved with a grace that captivated all who watched her. Beside her, Kwame, equally enchanted by the customs and the community's warmth, found himself more drawn to her with every passing moment. As the pair laughed over a shared joke, trying their hands at weaving a traditional basket under the guidance of an elderly craftsman, their camaraderie and genuine affection for each other were evident. This sight, so full of light and joy, was the perfect picture of what Leela believed she was denied. From the shadows of the marketplace, Leela watched them, her eyes narrowing and her hands clenched at her sides. The potion from the witch, a small vial of swirling darkness, pressed against her skin through the fabric of her dress, a constant reminder of the path she had chosen. The joy before her seemed to mock her loneliness fueling the bitterness that had taken root in her heart. Determined to not be a silent spectator in her own life, Leela moved through the crowd, her mind racing with plans. Each laugh and touch she witnessed between Ama and Kwame twisted the knife of envy deeper into her soul. She knew the moment to act was drawing near. The potion's power promised a change, a shift in the winds of fate. Meanwhile, Ama, blissfully unaware of Leela's turmoil, continued to immerse herself in the festival's activities. She found joy in the simple pleasures of her people's culture and pride in their heritage. Kwame, seeing her so vibrant and alive, felt a deep respect and affection that went beyond mere attraction. He admired her not just as a princess, but as a person who embodied the spirit of Zumali. As the day turned into night, the festival culminated in a grand display of fireworks that lit up the sky with dazzling bursts of color. Ama and Kwame stood side by side, their faces illuminated by the brilliant lights, their smiles reflecting the beauty of the moment. Leela, standing apart from the crowd, watched the fireworks reflect in her bitter eyes. She turned away, her decision cemented by the scene of happiness she felt she could never be a part of. Tonight, she vowed, would be the last night she stood in the shadows. The potion's time had come, and with it, the promise of a new dawn, one that she would shape with her own hands. This scene captures the stark contrast between the joyous community celebration and Leela's internal darkness, setting the stage for her decisive actions. The festival, with all its light and color, symbolizes the life that Leela feels excluded from, intensifying her resolve to change her destiny. Next, we'll see the consequences of Leela's actions as she puts her dark plan into motion. Under the cloak of the festival's final fireworks, the entire village of Zumali celebrated, unaware of the storm brewing within their midst. The royal palace, usually a beacon of strength and unity, was about to become the scene of a dire tragedy. Inside the opulent dining hall, King Chima hosted a grand feast to mark the end of the harvest festival. The long tables were laden with an array of traditional dishes and laughter echoed off the high ceilings. Princess Ama sat at her father's right hand, her face alight with the joy of the day's celebrations and beside her invited as a guest of honor was Kwame. His presence at the royal table was a testament to the bond he had formed with Ama and her implicit trust in him. Leela, her face a mask of serenity, 
that belied the turmoil within, moved through the hall with the grace of a shadow. In her possession, hidden beneath her finely woven shawl, was the witch's potion, a dark liquid that seemed to absorb light rather than reflect it. Her heart pounded with a mixture of fear and determination as she approached the royal table under the pretense of refilling the king's goblet. As she poured the wine, her hands steady, despite the screaming silence of her conscience, Leela slipped the dark potion into King Chima's drink. The liquid merged seamlessly with the wine, unnoticed by all, its deadly promise dissolving into the rich red depths. King Chima, his voice booming with laughter at a jest from one of his advisers, raised his goblet in a toast to Zumali's prosperity. To our beloved village, may it flourish for generations, he proclaimed and drank deeply. The poison worked swiftly and silently, a viper in the grass. Within moments, his laughter faltered, his face paled, and he clutched at his chest. The hall fell into sudden, stark silence as the king collapsed, his goblet clattering to the floor. Amma screamed, her voice a piercing echo in the sudden stillness as she rushed to her father's side. Kwame too moved to help, his face etched with concern and confusion. Leela stood back, her face a well-crafted mask of shock and sorrow, even as a cold satisfaction curled in her stomach. The first part of her plan had unfolded as intended, but the sight of Amma's despair, the genuine agony in her eyes, sparked an unexpected pang of guilt in Leela's heart. Yet, she silenced it, reminding herself of the years she spent in the shadows, overlooked and undervalued. As the royal physicians rushed in, the feast turned into a scene of chaos and fear. Whispers spread like wildfire. Was it an illness, a curse, or something worse? In the confusion, Leela retreated into the background, her eyes on Amma, who knelt beside her father, her tears mirroring the wine that stained the floor. In the days following King Chima's mysterious collapse, Zumali was cloaked in a heavy pall of grief and uncertainty. The king lay in a deep, unyielding slumber, his life hanging by a thread, tended night and day by the most skilled healers in the village. The once vibrant palace had turned into a quiet mausoleum of whispered prayers and somber faces. Princess Amma, devastated and scarcely leaving her father's bedside, seemed a shadow of her former self. Meanwhile, Kwame, disturbed by the abrupt turn of events and driven by a nagging sense that all was not as it seemed, began to keep a watchful eye on the comings and goings within the palace. His suspicions, initially mere whispers in his mind, grew louder as he observed Leela's strangely composed demeanor amidst the chaos. He noticed her lingering looks and furtive movements, which did not escape his trained hunter's instincts. One fateful evening, Kwame decided to confront Leela. He found her in the herb garden under the pretense of gathering ingredients for a soothing tonic for the king. The garden, usually a place of peace and regeneration, felt eerily silent as the two old friends faced each other. Leela, Kwame started, his voice firm, yet not without concern. Ever since that night, something about your behavior has struck me as odd. You move through the palace too calmly, too prepared. What happened to King Chima? Leela's heart skipped, her hands trembling slightly as she picked another sprig of lavender. Kwame, you are mistaken. I am merely trying to maintain a semblance of stability for Amma's sake, she replied, her voice a little too even. Kwame stepped closer, his eyes searching hers for the truth. I have seen many things in my life, Leela. I know when something is amiss. If you know something, now is the time to speak. The princess deserves the truth. Leela met his gaze, a flicker of panic passing through her eyes before she regained her composure. You should not let your feelings cloud your judgment, Kwame. We are all distressed by the king's illness, she said, her tone dismissive. Kwame, unconvinced and frustrated by her evasion, turned to leave, planning to speak directly to Amma. 
This reaction sparked a desperate fear in Leela. Exposure was a threat she could not afford. In a moment fueled by panic and the dark influence of the potion she had taken to strengthen her resolve, Leela made a grave decision. As Kwame's back was turned, Leela whispered an incantation she had learned from the witch, one that called upon the darker forces bound to the potion. The ground beneath Kwame's feet shifted subtly, the air thickening around him. He staggered, a sharp pain piercing his chest, his breath catching in his throat. Kwame collapsed, his body convulsing as the spell took hold, drawing the life from him swiftly and silently. By the time Leela's spell was complete, the hunter lay still, the moonlight casting long shadows over his motionless form. Leela, looking down at Kwame, felt a surge of power rush through her, a sinister confirmation of her newfound dominance. Yet, as she turned away, the weight of her actions, a friend dead by her hand, began to seep into her soul, her heart heavier than it had ever been. The morning after Kwame's mysterious demise, Zumali awoke to a palpable sense of dread that permeated the air, thick and suffocating like the fog that hung low over the village fields. The news of the beloved hunter's death spread like wildfire, leaving the villages in a state of shock and grief. Princess Amma, already crushed by her father's critical condition, was devastated anew when she heard of Kwame's passing. The scene of tragedy was beneath the ancient baobab tree, where Kwame's body was found. Amma rushed to the site, her heart a tumult of sorrow and confusion, only to be greeted by a sight that would haunt her, the lifeless body of Kwame, looking as if he had simply fallen asleep under the tree's vast canopy. As she knelt beside him, overwhelmed by loss, the village guards arrived, summoned by whispers of foul play. At the forefront was a figure driven by dark ambition, Leela. With calculated malice, she had spread sinister rumors in the early hours, whispers that pointed to a forbidden love affair between Amma and Kwame, suggesting that a princess scorned had turned deadly. She could not bear the thought of him rejecting her for the throne, for duty over passion, Leela murmured to the gathering crowd, her voice a mask of feigned sorrow. As Amma cradled Kwame's head in her lap, her tears mingling with the soil, the guards approached, their faces stern yet conflicted. Princess Amma, the captain of the guard began, his voice heavy. There are accusations that must be addressed. You are found with the deceased under circumstances most suspicious. We must ask you to come with us. Amma looked up, her grief-stricken eyes wide with disbelief. I did not do this, she pleaded, her voice barely a whisper. You must believe me. I loved him as a friend, nothing more. Despite her protests, the evidence Leela had fabricated was compelling in its deception. The village elders, swayed by Leela's manipulations and the potent influence of her dark magic, made a decision that shook the very foundations of Zumali. They could not sentence the daughter of their revered king to death, but nor could they ignore the seeds of doubt Leela had sown. Thus, with heavy hearts and clouded judgment, they banished Princess Amma from Zumali. Leave and never return, they decreed, their words echoing like a death knell across the silent crowd. Amma, draped in a cloak of despair, was escorted beyond the village borders, her once bright future as queen, now a shattered mosaic of what could have been. Leela watched from the shadows, her face an unreadable mask. As Amma disappeared from view, a new era dawned for Zumali, one of darkness and deceit under Leela's rule. Her heart, once capable of love and friendship, was now a citadel of bitterness and ambition. The villagers, though compliant, whispered among themselves, uneasy and unsettled by the swift change in fate. The seeds of doubt and fear were sown, and though Leela had achieved her aim of power, the throne she sat upon was built on unstable ground. As the sun sets over the troubled lands of Zumali, casting long shadows across the village that once thrived under the rule of justice and compassion, 
a new chapter of darkness begins. Princess Ama, once the beacon of hope and joy for her people, now wanders into the unknown, banished and brokenhearted, with the chilling echoes of betrayal ringing in her ears. But what lies beyond the borders of Zumali for a princess stripped of her title and her home? Can Ama uncover the truth and reclaim the throne that is rightfully hers? Or will the shadows of deceit that have taken root in Zumali grow too thick? And what of Leela, whose heart once knew the light of friendship? With the throne now under her command, will her reign bring ruin to the once prosperous village? Can the darkness within her be overcome? Or will it consume all that she once held dear? Stay tuned for part two, where secrets will be unveiled, alliances will be forged, and the true test of courage and loyalty will determine the fate of a kingdom. Will justice prevail, or will Zumali fall into despair under the weight of its new queen's iron fist? Join us as the saga continues and discover if a princess without a crown can lead her people back to the light.